I think the one that I think was the funniest, and, and I look back on it and I tell more than any other one, was I had to, we decided to test how much uh, a Depends diaper could take as far as, uh, you know what I mean, the, the nasty stuff. So anyways, I went to work at five o'clock in the morning and I put on a Depends diaper and a baby bonnet and I had a rattle and that's all I wore and for three and a half hours, I drank two pots of coffee, two gallons of apple juice, um, anything in liquid form that I could put into my body. Jeff and Mark, the guys on my morning show who I ended up working with on 94.5, they um, were having a meeting in the conference room, and it might have been on a Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever, but uh, they were actually pitching the concept to the program director and to the general manager of the radio station. So they're in this conference room having a meeting, and, and they're like, all right, listen, you know, we want to add this element to the morning show. We want to have this guy named Danger Boy, and he's going to do stunts live on the air, and we're not even sure what stunts we're going to do. It's just kind of in the brainstorming phase right now. And um, the general manager said, well, who do you have in mind for this? And they were like, we really don't know. And then at that exact moment, somebody opened the door to the conference room, and I was out doing one of my grab my crotch, lighting your testicles on fire, and, and you know comedy routines for the whole people, you know, out by the copy machine, and 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 everybody's just roaring, and I'm telling some story, and and everybody's having fun with it, and they said that's who's going to be Danger Boy, that guy right there. So they approached me a couple days later with the idea and the concept, and I had no desire to be on the radio. I hated the sound of my voice. I was not comfortable being in front of people, none of those things. But at the same time, I was eager to, to, to start to be involved in radio, and the more I'd been around the station, the more that I started to see, wow, this would be a really cool way to make a living. Um, the other part of it was is that when I did decide I wanted to be in radio, um, I wanted to be a morning show guy. I didn't just want to be a voice in a chair going, it's cloudy out today, that was Pink Floyd, stay tuned. We got some Led Zeppelin coming up next after commercial break. I didn't want to be that guy. You know, I, I love to talk and I love to entertain and, and so morning show was the, was the canvas that I needed. Um, I wasn't just going to be a guy that talked one minute between breaks. Uh, I wanted to be someone that, that had something to say. I did over 70 stunts and, and I'm almost 50 years old now, so I'm glad that, that we're sticking to a couple of them that I can actually remember. But that was Danger Boy was a, a thing that we did and it was tied into a, a, into a client that we were working with and they uh, were at a laundromat and they were doing a grand opening for three or four uh, laundromats and one of the sales guys you know, approached me about doing something and, and they said, uh, you know, you got any ideas? And I said, well, it'd be funny if you just invited all the listeners out for three hours to dump whatever they wanted over my head and, and you could call it Dow's Danger Boy. And um, you know, back then I was a, a starving college kid and I think I made reference to the point they weren't paying me. So the only way I got any money early on they would give me what is called in the biz as a talent fee and um, you know I got three hundred dollars to do this particular stunt so that made the decision to do it real easy but basically for three hours I stood out inside of a laundromat in a baby pool and, and uh, I was at the at the actual um, location of the client and on the air back at the radio station uh, they were inviting everybody to come out for three hours and dump whatever they wanted over my head and um, I'm, I'm talking deer urine uh, I, there was Massingale douches, there was kitty litter, there was bacon grease from people's uh, restaurants, there were bags of flour, there were honey, uh, motor oil. I, I can go on and my therapist and I are still working our way through all of this, but it, you know, it, it was just a really fun event and, um, you know, I look back on it now and, uh, you know, uh, have fond memories. That particular day it was not that great. I think I still smelled like deer urine and, and cat litter and, and honey and flour for about three weeks after that. But that was one that was a big hit. People really liked that one a lot. Um, I, I think that um, the concept for um, the telephone booth one, I was against it. But basically for three hours they sat on the air and talked about how, um, you know, Danger Boy was going to be down on Monroe Street in downtown Toledo at one of those old-fashioned telephone booths. And they invited the listeners to bring their children's dirty diapers down. And so here I was in a telephone booth and by the end of the thing I was filled up to my chin in dirty diapers. Uh, and then at the end of the, and at the, end of the um, uh, actual promotion or 
Danger Boy stunt, uh, I thought it was over, and then I walked out of the telephone booth, and unbeknownst to me, they had the fire department waiting there, and they sprayed me down with high-pressure hoses. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. You know, I look back on it now, and there's nothing I really regret about it. Um, I think the one thing I'm proudest about was, and, and if any of my other fellow DJs uh, hear this, though, they'll, you know, maybe not be happy with me, but the majority of people I worked with had incredibly strong egos. I didn't like the way they treated people. I didn't like the way they talked behind people's back. I didn't like the, the way that they weren't very approachable. Uh, I, 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 I prided myself watching these other people who were the big wigs in the industry when I started. And I, I, I think what I'm proudest about was I was still a, a cool, hip, happening cat and, and, you know, was extremely approachable. I took time to talk to everybody. Um, you know, I never got a big head about it. Um, uh, I always tried to keep that stuff in check. And uh, I think when I look back on it now, it, it was so fun. I think it helped me not be bitter or whatever it was after it all ended. Um, it was just an incredible experience all the way around.